Good morning, beloved, and for all those of you that are joining us online, it's great to have this opportunity to share with you. And uh, as we begin, let's take a moment just to pray and commit this to the Lord. Join with me as we pray. Father God, we thank you for this beautiful day that you've blessed us with. We thank you that we have your presence. We ask you this morning to meet with us, and we invite you, Holy Spirit, to instruct us and to teach us, and that your name might be glorified in all the earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you have your Bibles, which I hope you do, we're going to go to Matthew chapter 6, and we're going to start reading from verse 5 to verse 15. And this morning, we're going to be speaking about Father God. So turn with me to Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 onwards. I'll be reading from my device. And when you pray, you are not to be as the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. And in praying, do not use vain repetitions as the unbelievers do, for they, thinking that they will be heard for their much speaking. Therefore, do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you need before you even ask Him. Verse 9. Therefore, you should pray this way. Our Father in heaven, holy be your name. Let your kingdom come. And let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive people their wrongdoing, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive people, neither will your Father forgive your wrongdoing. In this portion of scripture, we see that Jesus is speaking and he directs his disciples to, to understand about the Father. He says, when you pray, you pray to the Father, and this is how you should pray. And so the opening phrase uh, of this prayer that Jesus taught his disciples begins with these two words, our Father, which expresses a personal intimate connection with God the Father. And that's critical, it's crucial in to understand who the father is and so it speaks of the relationship of a father to a son or a daughter you see we cannot call god our father unless we have a relationship with him the relationship through jesus christ is critical so god is our father we are his sons and daughters i want to consider four things this morning there's a lot more to really talk about uh, about the father about father god but I just want to give you four. The first one is that our Father, God the Father, is the Creator. We see this in Genesis chapter 1, which is, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God is the Creator. He created everything. This is an awesome power and great creativity. He's the master designer. A look at the human body reveals to us the wonder of His creation. When you consider all the various systems in the human body and how they all work together and are integrated and function, many of them without our conscious uh, of, uh, activity and uh, conscious effort on our part, these systems function. And this is the creativity of God the Father. And so he's the creator. So he's the, the fine tuning of the universe again speaks to God's awesome design and creativity. We accept by faith that God created the world. We see this in Hebrews 11, chapter 3, that we accept by faith. I want to take you to John chapter 1 and verse 10. If you have your Bibles, just go there real quick. John chapter 1 and verse 10, where we read this, He was in the world, and the world was made through Him, but the world did not recognize Him. And then again, if we can look at Colossians chapter 1, verse 16. Colossians chapter 1, and verse 16 for by him were all things all things were created in the heavens and on the earth things visible and things invisible whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities all things have been created by him and for him in Psalm 33 verse 6 we read by the word of the Lord the heavens were made and all their host by the breath of his mouth and so we understand that God the Father 
is the creator. He created all things. He's an amazing and powerful God. And so we recognize his sovereignty. He's omniscient. He's all-knowing. He's omnipotent. He's all-powerful. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere. This is our Father. As believers, this is our Father. An awesome and amazing God for whom nothing is too difficult. So the first lesson we learn about him is that the first thing we can understand is that he's the creator. He's amazing. He's awesome. He's powerful. He's our dad. And so we can be safe in his hands. The second thing is that we read then in, in, in that prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. He said, give us this day our daily bread. So we see father as a provider. Our father God is our provider. He provides our daily needs. I must add as distinct from our wants. Oh yes, we have many wants, but let me reassure you, God is so amazing and so big and so awesome that you can come to him with your needs, you can come to him with your wants, you can come to him with the most uh, extravagant requests. God is big enough to handle that. You don't have to stress about it, but over time you'll start to learn to come to him with your needs and he, will, he can be surely trusted to provide our needs. After all, look around at the world that he created. He did all of that out of nothing. So you can have this confidence that Father God can meet you at your point of need and provide for all your needs. And it would be good for us to remember, Father God knows what's best for us. In many ways, as a parent, sometimes we want to say to our children, I know what's best for you. Whilst we as parents, human parents, are fallible and we don't really sometimes always know what's best for our children, one thing we do know, Almighty God, Father God, is always able to say, I know what's best for you. And so we don't have to worry. And it needs to be said that knowing that Father God will provide our needs At no point in time should we see that as a legitimization of laziness on our part. It's not that we just kind of sit back, do nothing. After all, God will provide all our needs. No. We play our part and God will fulfill his role as father. He will provide for us. He will meet us at our point of need. So just like in that prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, it's an acknowledgement. Father will meet us and provide our daily needs. We can trust him. But I must add, it's not a license to be lazy. The, th- the third thing that we can look at in as we talk about Father God is that Father is our protector. In that prayer says, lead us not into temptation, but keep us from the evil one. In other words, protect us from the evil one. You see, God's protection is manifested in, in two different ways, through permission and through prevention. You see, God sometimes will permit something into our lives and guide us in a particular way to protect us, to make sure that we're going in the direction that we ought to go. Equally, there are times when God protects us by preventing us from going in a certain direction. So there's permission and prevention. So God permits us and leads us into places of safety from harm, God also prevents us from going in a certain direction in order, to, in order to protect us. Perhaps right now you're feeling like, I've been wanting to, to, to do this or I've been wanting to go a certain way, but it just seems like every time I, I do that, uh, it doesn't come to pass. It, it just, I just feel as though it's being blocked. Maybe you need to take some time out and meet with the Lord. Perhaps in order for your protection, God is preventing you from going that way. Now, of course, you might say to me, well, does God do that? In Acts chapter 16 and verse 6, Paul speaks of the fact that they were forbidden to preach in a particular place. Now, can you imagine that? Being forbidden to preach. And yet, God can and does at times prevent us and say, no, don't do that. And remember that all, all that the Father does in our lives is for our benefit. God, and for our protection and for our welfare, God is not out to mess your life. God is not vindictive. He's not out to get you. 
He's not out to mess you up. God is out to ensure that you are well cared for. He's concerned about your welfare. And part of that concern as Father God is that he wants to protect you. And for those of you as parents, you know what it's like with your children. I mean, when something comes against your child, threatens your child, puts your child in danger, immediately something rises up. And without even thinking sometimes, we place ourselves sometimes in harm's way to protect our child. Father God is like that with us. He protects us. He goes out of his way to protect us. In fact, he loves us so much. Father gave his son to die on a cross to protect us, to give us a way back to him, to have that relationship where we can say, our Father who art in heaven. And then finally, the fourth thing that I want to just draw your attention to this, this morning is the fact that Father establishes our identity. You remember when Jesus was baptized, the voice of God the Father coming from heaven says, this is my son. Not this is my daughter, not this is somebody's son, not maybe it could be, this is my son. And so Father establishes his identity and he says, not only is this my son, it's my son whom I love and with whom I am well pleased. We need to take heart. Father establishes our identity and God is very clear. There's no maybes, there's no perhaps. And so I want to go to a portion of scripture where we can learn about this father of ours, this heavenly father who is very clear about establishing our identity. Psalm 139. Some of you will know this psalm very well. Psalm 139. And I want to read from uh, verse 13. And this is the psalmist writing under the anointing of the Holy Spirit at that time, speaking of God the Father. For you formed my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will give thanks to you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, and my soul knows that very well. My frame, that means my body, wasn't hidden from you when I was made in secret, woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my body. In, you, in your book, they were all written, the days that were ordained for me, when as yet none of them had come to pass. And then I want to just say, read verse 17. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. And so we see that <coughs> Father God establishes our identity. He establishes who we are. Father knows who I am. And we see this even in biology when we learn about chromosomes. The female chromosome identity is XX. The male is XY. And from that simple XXXY, we realize that a the female always gives XX. It's the father, the male, the father, who gives the distinction and the definition and brings about an establishment of an identity. It is that, that's just the way it is. And that's not to undermine, and let it be said, that's not to undermine the importance of the woman. Because without the woman, there'd be no babies. So let's just be very clear about that. This is an issue of role uh, and, and, and purpose. And so as we look at this, we see that Father establishes our identity, who I am, who you are. Young man, young woman, mother, father, husband, wife. God the Father establishes your identity. He says, who you are. Now the question, there's a couple of questions that need to be addressed. One, have you come to the knowledge of your identity? I cannot think of many things that can be so disheartening and disappointing as an individual who doesn't know their identity, who they are. And with that obviously would come value. Because once you know who you are, it's very easy to recognize your value. And so, Father establishes identity, but the question is, do I know 
my identity because if I don't know who my what my identity is, well, then I walk it aimlessly. So number one, do you know, and have you come to the knowledge of your identity? Number two, it gets a little bit more subtle now. Do you believe that this is your identity? You see, you cannot walk with confidence in something you do not believe. Just think about that. If I took you mountain climbing and I tied a rope around you and I said, hold on this rope and climb and if you fall, the rope will catch you. If you did not believe that that rope was strong enough to hold your weight, I doubt very much that you would climb with confidence and certainly knowing that if I do trip and fall, I'm safe. This rope will hold me. You wouldn't be able to. Why? Because you don't believe that that rope can hold your weight. In the same way, you may say, I know my identity. I know what, who I am. In, I mean, I, I know it intellectually. But the question is, do I believe it? Am I able to say with confidence? Not only do I know, but I believe that that's actually who I am. And then he gets a little bit tighter, a little bit more, a little bit tougher. Question number three, are you living in keeping with the identity Father God has given you? Are you living in keeping with your identity? You see, Father God says, you're my kid. You can say, I know I'm Father God's kid. You can say, and I believe it. But then you can behave in a manner that indicates that you're not walking in the role and in the manner in which a kid, a, father, a son or a daughter of God the Father ought to be living and walking. You see, God the Father says, you are my kid. I know you. You are loved. You are created with purpose. It's built into you. You are gifted. You are empowered by Holy Spirit. These are all things that are part of our identity. And Father God says, this is you. So the third question is, are you living in keeping with your identity? So let me just remind you of those three questions that I said. And I want, this is your homework. Number one, have you come to the knowledge of your identity? As Father God declares it, not as the fashion magazines or the media or your next door neighbor or uh, your parents or somebody else, but as Father God has determined, this is you. Do you know who you are? Do you know that identity? Number two, do you believe it? Have you taken it from here to here, from your head to your heart? Have you taken it from there and said, I know and I believe that this is who I am in God. This is who Father God declares I am. So that when things and challenges come, and then right now, you know with the COVID situation, we are facing many challenges. And in it, the enemy would like to try and tell us that we're everything but valued and loved by Father God. So the question number two is, do you believe that this is your identity? Do you believe it? Have you absorbed it? And then thirdly, are you walking, are you living in keeping with that identity? So as we come to a close this morning, you might say to me, well, Father God, how can I, how can I get to know Father God? Well, number one, I think as you spend time with him. By that I mean times of prayer, uh, listening to songs of worship, reading the scriptures that describe who Father God is, uh, are critical ways that we can get to know Father God as we spend time with him. Number two, as we hear and listen to our older siblings, tell us about him. Who's our older siblings? Those that are more mature than us in the Lord. Those that have been walking in with Father God in a relationship for longer. Those who got born again before us who can say, let me tell you about our father. I remember a time when, the, and they described for you how father it was involved in their life and, and how father was participating in their life. And they can say, believe you me, dad can be trusted. Believe you me, father can be trusted. 
So how do I get to know him? When I listen to my older siblings tell me about him. And then finally, it's just as I, every day, walk with him. By walk, I mean in my everyday life, at work, at play, uh, whether at home, whether socially with other people. Of course, these days you have to socially distance. Praise the Lord, we don't have to socially distance from God the Father. But we walk our day life, our daily life with Father, with the knowledge that Father is with us. Father is observing us. Father's like standing there saying, hey son, hey daughter, I'm in your corner. So how do we get to know the Father? We spend time with him, we listen to our older siblings, and we walk with him. Here's the final conclusion. Since we have a father, we are not orphans. We are not abandoned. We are treasured, appreciated, and believed in. Believed in by whom? By this omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, amazing, sovereign, almighty God who dwells in, in realms that we couldn't fully understand and yet loves us enough to give us his son, give us his Holy Spirit, and care for us, and he adopts us into his family. So today and every other day, my prayer for you is that you walk in the knowledge that you are indeed a child of Father God, and with that comes an amazing, amazing array of benefits, of responsibilities, Yes, responsibilities, but just that safety of knowing that I am his kid. I have an identity. I'm not just a, a blob of flesh on this big rock floating through the universe. I'm a child of God. Father God treasures me, loves me, and considers me very precious. I pray that if there's anyone who's really struggling with understanding who Father God is, that as a result of this message this morning, you go home, you take some time out, open the scriptures, you make a phone call, you'll ask somebody that you know has been walking with in, in relationship with God for a longer time than you. You'll get hold of them and say, tell me about Father God. God bless you. Please do stay safe. Continue to abide in him. We love you and we are praying soon that we will be able to be meeting face to face where we can see each other, uh, not just looking through a computer screen. For those of you that are online, we look forward to seeing more of you and we're trusting and praying that the doors will be open, that we can move into our sanctuary and gather together and together raise our voices and give glory to God the Father. God bless you. Keep strong. Amen.